Leonardo da Vinci once dreamed of flying, and he spent considerable time designing vehicles with which to do so. Some may have thought he was just a dreamer, but today air travel is a given. Others have dreamed of being able to control other aspects of our lives and our world, including the weather. Has that dream been realized also? And when do such dreams become nightmares? Contrails. We've all seen them, those thin white vapor trails that follow airplanes and then dissipate. Then there are chemtrails, a phrase coined for those other, larger, more ominous trails that turn into odd-looking clouds and fill our skies with a crisscrossed pattern of gloom and unanswered questions. On Friday, March 5th, 2010, we went outside with a camera to see if we could capture some of these chemtrails on film. And this is what we saw. What are they? What is their purpose? And why is there an apparent cover-up behind them? A quick search on the internet will yield hundreds of thousands of articles, videos, and discussions about this phenomenon. There are those who say that chemtrails exist, and those who say that they're just a crazy conspiracy theory, a term often applied to discredit those who see what someone doesn't want them to. But is it still a theory if the subject of that theory actually does exist? What if there's evidence? What if there's proof? While many of us are busy arguing at our computers or reading articles written by others, we never think to look up at the actual sky and see for ourselves. But those who do watch the sky inevitably begin to see chemtrails firsthand. These are clearly not contrails, nor are they clouds. They are very different. All around the world, these chemtrails are being photographed, filmed, analyzed, and documented. Chemtrails have been observed and reported since around 1997, but have apparently increased in frequency and quantity over the years since then. It's not uncommon to notice them in sky shots of television shows, films, and print ads. These distinctive lines in the sky have even been captured in satellite photos. So the question is not whether or not they exist. The fact is they do exist, and they are very definitely turning many a blue sky into a hazy white mess. The question is, why do they exist? What are they for? And why aren't we being told the truth? When we aren't told why something is happening, all we can do is speculate. When we are told that something doesn't exist, yet we can see that something with our own eyes, we become suspicious, and the theories begin to fly. Some say the purpose of chemtrails is to change the weather, to cool things down, to help mitigate the effects of global warming in a world that seems unwilling, or perhaps not allowed by special interests, to stop burning fossil fuels. Chemtrails certainly do appear to alter the weather, but is there more? Some claim the purpose of chemtrails is to spread the H1N1 virus or other diseases, or to make us more susceptible to them, thereby creating an epidemic and reducing the population to a more sustainable number, a rather radical approach to environmental concerns. Others claim the purpose of creating such an epidemic is to frighten the masses into getting vaccinated, which in itself leads to many other sinister theories. Still others claim that the purpose is to create a thick cloud cover over the sun to hide something that someone doesn't want the rest of us to see, such as the controversial Planet X or Nibiru. There's even the claim that chemtrails are dispersed by remote-controlled military aircraft, a technology that actually has been in existence for decades. Then there are those who claim that chemtrails are part of a secret government program called Project Cloverleaf, linking them to the HARP program, the U.S. military's high-frequency active auroral research program, which many claim is a scalar weapon of mass destruction that can elicit specific disasters in specific regions on demand. These claims connect HARP not only with intentionally induced disasters, such as earthquakes and hurricanes, but also mind control of the masses. Are these assertions made by reliable sources? Well, some of these claims have been made by former military personnel and other government employees. Additionally, air traffic controllers at major airports across the U.S. have expressed concern over chemtrails, and some claim it has become a hushed topic among weather reporters. A couple of years ago, Germany became the first country to admit that chemtrails are real and are part of a military operation to manipulate the climate and disrupt radar signals. In the U.S., it is common knowledge that aerial spraying is used to disperse pesticides, or in the case of wildfires, fire retardant. But as far as chemtrails go, the only government official to speak up on this was allegedly a particularly ethical congressman and former presidential candidate who introduced a bill that included a provision to ban chemtrails. As the story goes, he was pressured to rewrite the bill excluding the mention of chemtrails, and he has become eerily quiet about chemtrails since then. Was he hushed by someone who didn't want the truth to get out? There are those who claim this is a myth and that it never happened. But then there are those who claim that those who do want to keep it a secret have launched a disinformation campaign across the internet to muddle the truth. Others claim that those who have been too vocal about chemtrails have been hushed by being either discredited, threatened, or even killed. Are these all just outrageous claims made by conspiracy theorists? Or is there some truth to them? As we all know, where there's smoke, there's often fire. While some have attempted to prove or disprove the existence of chemtrails by testing jet fuel for high levels of aluminum, one of the alleged ingredients of chemtrails, others explain that these aerosols are deployed into our atmosphere via special canisters attached to the wings of aircraft rather than dispersing them via the engines. 
The claim is that these aerosols contain a barium salt mixture and sometimes other substances, including biological ones. Those who have tested chemtrail contaminated air or water claim to have discovered dangerously high levels of barium. Those who have had heavy metal toxicity tests have even found these high barium levels in their own bodies with no known cause. Chemtrails have been linked to many health conditions, including headaches, gastrointestinal and flu-like symptoms, respiratory conditions, including lung cancer, and those mysterious dizzy spells that so many of us have experienced in recent years. What's the truth behind all of this? I don't know. What I do know is that chemtrails are very real, available to be witnessed by anyone who watches the skies long enough and often enough to observe a round of chemtrail spraying with their own eyes. If the purpose really is to mitigate global warming, we have to ask ourselves if fighting the result of pollution with more pollution is really the answer. Some claim that global warming doesn't really exist, but regardless, our air is polluted and so is our water. Our landfills are filling up and our natural resources are running out. There are many practical answers to today's environmental crisis, most of which are not being implemented by most people. But it is the duty and responsibility of each and every one of us to do our part. We must not wait for someone else to fix things for us. It's up to us. We truly can work to make this a sustainable world, sustainable for all of us. Humanity is at a crossroads. It's time we wake up, stand up, look up, and ask ourselves, what's up? Mm -hmm.